Hey ladies, my name is Kayla Albritton. I am an EI alumni and I'm so excited to talk to y'all this morning about quiet times. When I was a teenager, quiet times for me um, honestly was pretty confusing. Um, I was often frustrated because I wasn't getting the experience that I thought that I was supposed to have. This would really just discourage me from even wanting to try to have a quiet time um, because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing or how I was supposed to be feeling and I didn't even really know where to start. Um, today my quiet time experience is much different. Today I long to have a quiet time and most days uh, I wish that I had more time to do that. Um, but here's the thing, I didn't get there overnight. I did not wake up one morning um, with a sudden level of spirituality that gave me capability of um, filling a long time with the Lord. And um, I didn't just come up with a special formula for the perfect quiet time. So what happened? Well, the Lord used my two years at EI as a really foundational time um, to grow my quiet time life with Him. I began to really learn what it means to know God and to spend time with Him. And that is what a quiet time is. It's just cultivating the relationship that God, the creator of the universe, desires to have with you. I imagine that most of you at some point, if not still, have those same feelings um, about your own quiet time, those feelings of being overwhelmed or discouraged or confused or even just intimidated. I want you to know that you're not alone in feeling this way. Don't be discouraged. That's why we are here to talk about it today. Simply put, a quiet time is just spending personal time with Jesus Christ. So for today, we're just going to try to expand that definition and our understanding of a quiet time by talking about the why, the who, and the how of a quiet time. So let's talk about why. Why do we need to have a quiet time? Well, our Creator is a personal, relational God, and we were created to be in perfect fellowship with Him. That perfect fellowship was broken when sin entered the world, but God did not give up on us then. He made a way for us to know Him through Jesus Christ. He desires and longs to spend time with us. It brings Him pleasure. These are some thoughts found in Song of Solomon chapter 2. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away with me. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. This is how the Lord thinks about you. He calls us to taste and see that He is good, and we cannot do that if we aren't spending time with Him. Our quiet time is important also because it corrects our perspective. It allows us to recognize that we are limited and deficient and that He is all-powerful, He is completely sufficient, and we can trust Him. <clears throat> As believers, we have been called to lay down our lives for the sake of Jesus' name by serving Him and those around us. That can be exhausting, and we just mentioned that we're limited and deficient. We find life and strength through Jesus Christ, and those are just a few reasons why we need to have a quiet time. So let's talk about the who of our quiet time. Obviously, that who is the Lord, and that seems very obvious, but I do not want us to miss who it is that we are coming to. Let's look at Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Here we see that God is everything that we are not. He provides all that we lack. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. Inscrutable means impossible to fathom. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord, or those who hope in the Lord, those who trust in the Lord, will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Ladies, he provides all that we lack. Something else that we must understand about the Lord is that He speaks. 
This might look different from the way that you're communicated with by your parents or your friends, but he speaks nonetheless. This is a part of his character, and his character has not, will not, and cannot change. He spoke at the beginning of time, and the world was created, and to this day he is speaking, drawing people to himself. Speaking is a part of who the Lord is, so when we come to him, we come expectantly, knowing he will speak. So now let's talk about the how. As I mentioned earlier, there's no perfect formula to having a quiet time. So I just want to share some helpful tips that I've used um, and that others have used and shared with me. First of all, we must put away the desire to impress. Let that go. The Lord already knows everything about you. We must come to him humbly expressing our need for him rather than trying to prove ourselves to him. He's not asking you to perform for him. He's asking you to come and just spend time with him. The goal of our quiet time must be about him, not about us and not um, about conjuring up some feeling or an idealistic uh, experience. Next, we need to understand that the how of a quiet time is simply embracing the who. It's sitting in the reality of who the Lord is. Ask him to reveal himself to you in new ways that you haven't seen before. Recognize the greatness of his character and that he is all that you need. Look away from yourself and look to the perfect one. Our problems seem so much smaller when we realize how big he is. Worship him. The more we are with him and the more we worship him, the more like him we become. God wants us to know him, not just in an intellectual way, but in a personal way that will transform us into his image more and more. Consistency is key. Like I said, I didn't just wake up one day knowing how to have a great quiet time. It took doing it every day, sticking with it even when it's hard, and being willing to humble myself and learn. This is not always easy. There are still days when I'm distracted or when I'd rather sleep in, and there are some days when I don't have a quiet time, but I know I must press on, and you must press on. I cannot grow discouraged. I have to ask the Lord to help me to be faithful in my pursuit of Him. Remember that no matter how you feel, the Lord is there and desires time with you. We want coming to the Lord to become muscle memory, a habit. So if you don't already have habits set in place, I would encourage you to start with some of these. Find a regular time and space away from distraction. Coming to the same space every day can be really helpful in getting into a pattern. Finding a reading plan or working through a devotional book can also be really helpful and provide a lot of structure. When you come to the scriptures, have a notebook and a pen with you. And when you read a passage, write down and answer these three questions. What does this passage say about God? What does this passage say about me? And how should I respond to what this passage teaches? Something else that is helpful is finding an accountability partner. Someone who can hold you accountable to your goals and encourage you to press on. Your quiet time should be spent just with you and the Lord, but that doesn't mean that other people can't be helpful to you in this area. In fact, I would urge you to talk to others, especially others who are older than you and who've walked with the Lord longer. Another way others can be helpful to your quiet times is by you reading books by or about those who had an intimate relationship with Jesus. There is much for us to learn from those who have walked with the Lord before us. Lastly, I would just encourage you not to get discouraged by what you are or aren't seeing right away. Walking with Jesus is a lifelong learning experience. Keep seeking Him. He is not angry with you when you become distracted or your quiet time doesn't go the way that you planned it to. Ask Him for help and trust Him to grow you, even if that looks different than how you think it should look um, and it's not in your timing. He has promised us that if we seek him, we will find him and we can trust that promise. Do not let fear or a lack of understanding keep you from trusting him and seeking him today.